In this video, we're gonna take a look at Feature Section Sierra, which is a page width section with auto alternating feature cards where the image actually breaks out to the edge of the viewport. And the effect that the visitor gets is that this seems like these are full width cards. However, if you look closely, you're gonna see that the content column of the cards is always in perfect alignment with the page width of the website. And when you see this very popular layout on other websites, I want you to look for this because a lot of times they're not really built correctly. They're built with full width containers. And while it works and it achieves the desired effect, you actually lose page width alignment. And in our estimation, that's really, really important to maintain. And if you try to maintain page width alignment with a layout like this, it's actually very, very difficult. There's a lot of challenges that need to be overcome with a layout like this. Uh, challenges related to the width of the containers, the width of the viewport, the height of the images, the aspect ratio of the images. Thankfully, we feel like we have overcome all of the challenges and packaged it up into a frame that is easy to use, easy to customize and break proof. And that's what we're gonna take a look at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to templates and remote templates, and I'm gonna hit refresh just to make sure that we're bringing in the latest version of the frame. And then what I'm gonna do is search for feature section Sierra, and you're gonna see it right here. I'm gonna to toggle on import images, and then I'm gonna go ahead and import this template. Now, it is important to note that there is a code block that comes with this template. It's inside of Feature Grid Sierra, and it says JS right down here for JavaScript. And I want you to go ahead and execute that code. Now, hopefully in the future, uh, when you import a template with a code snippet that is activated on the source site, Bricks will activate it automatically on your site as well. That's not currently the case. You have to manually activate any code snippets. So just make sure that you go ahead and do that. This code snippet's a very, very small code snippet, but it's part of the functionality that ensures that um, all of these images, the ratios, everything will be calculated properly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And let's just take a look at what is going on on the front end of this website. So we've got a nice little clean intro section here. You're gonna notice that these accent headings are already styled. Why is that? It's because this website that I'm working on already had accent image or accent headings styled at the class level. So whenever I import a new frame, it's gonna automatically adopt that accent heading styling for you. Um, next thing you're gonna notice as we scroll down the page is that the content alternates from right to left and the images alternate from left to right. And the big thing, as I mentioned earlier here, if you look at the left side, this is the uh, where the page width of the website starts. It goes from the left of the logo to, to the right of this home icon right here, or this home link. And if you look, as if I put my cursor on the left side of this logo and scroll down, you're gonna see that this content is in perfect alignment with the page width. And if we look at the right side where the home is, you're gonna see the exact same thing happening here. The content is in perfect alignment with the page width, even though the images are breaking out to the edge of the viewport. Now, this is a little bit easier to do if you have perfect ratios, so a, an exact left to right uh, even columns, basically. If you want overlapping or uneven columns, this is very, very difficult to do. And so one thing I wanna show you about this frame, we'll just do this right now before we even get started on styling things, just so you can see the power uh, and the flexibility of a frame like this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Feature Grid Sierra, and you can see it says CSS tab, and that's letting me know that there are controls in the CSS tab for this frame. So I'm gonna activate the class, I'm gonna go down to style, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And what we're gonna see here is that there are three locally scoped variables. And these allow me to manipulate the behavior of this frame. Right now you're gonna see that the feature span is set to five, which means the image is taking up the remaining seven columns in this 12 column grid. And we can easily change this. So if I go over here, just take note 
We have five over here. The image is taking up seven. If I want these to be exactly even, then it would need to be six and six. So I can simply set the feature span to six, and this is all going to refactor. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We'll go view this on the front end. And now you can see the content width column, the or the content column width, is exactly the same as the image width. And it's doing that all the way down the page. And what you end up with is a nice little gutter right here down the middle of the page. Now, if we look at something, maybe we wanna control this gutter width. Can we do that? Yes, there's actually a grid card gap variable right here. And this controls the amount of gap inside of each card. And again, these are global changes. So when I make a change to this, you're gonna see it apply to all of the cards on the page. I can change this to 1.5, that gap is going to narrow. 0.5, the gap narrows even more. I don't particularly like that, but let's go ahead and look at what happened on the front end. I'm gonna refresh and you see the content is very, very close to the image now. Now I prefer to have it more like what it was at at 2.5. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and refresh, but check this out, the gap is changing the size of the grid, is changing effective widths. And one thing we have to check for is when I change this gap, do we lose page width alignment with our content? I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh. You can see the edge of the logo here. I scroll down, we're still in perfect alignment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set that back. All right, the other thing that we can control is the aspect ratio of the image. This is the starting aspect ratio of the image. One thing to note is that we also have created this frame so that as this content grows on the right-hand side, if it becomes too tall, the image is gonna continue to grow with that content as well. That way your content is not longer than your image, which does not look good whatsoever. So we've already thought that through and we have it so that if your content gets longer, the image is going to start out at the aspect ratio that you choose. However, it is going to get taller if it needs to, to match the height of the content next to it. So those are your three basic controls here, and we'll play around with them a little bit more, but what I wanna show you is how easy is it to just start dropping in content and get to a workable uh, section that you can hit save and your page is almost done. So I've got, let me, let me go ahead and open in a new tab. I'm gonna do this on a separate screen so it doesn't have to be in your way. And I'm just gonna grab my content for this section. We're gonna go ahead and drop it in. So I'm gonna grab our heading for our section and we're gonna drop that in right here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the lead paragraph, which we're gonna drop in right here. And then I have a content for each card. And what, what we'll do before we do the actual content is we'll just drop in the images. So I'm gonna go with this image here. We're doing a surgical theme. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this image next. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this image right here. And then this image, oh, look, we need one additional card. What are we going to do? Do we have to add a card and then manually flip the columns around? No, I want you to remember that this is an auto alternating section. Therefore, all I have to do is duplicate that last card and it's gonna automatically reproduce an alternate version of it, right? So the image, the one that I just copied had the image on the left and the content on the right. Even though I duplicated that one, it put the image on the right and the content on the left. That's all done for me. I don't have to worry about dragging columns around or changing order properties or anything else. It all happens automatically. All right, and then all I have to do is swap the actual image and hit insert and we're good to go. Of course, these are already in figure tags. So they're already, you know, the HTML5 specification is, is already being adhered to. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just drop content in. So we have this one saying machine vision. Uh, we have this one saying the vision is clear. And then we'll go ahead and style these up in just a second. Uh, this is flash navigation system. This one says reimagine rapid uh, registration in a flash. And then the next one is going to say spine navigation. The next one is gonna say radiation free image guided surgery. And then I'm gonna do the very last one, which is cranial navigation. And this one is going to say 
entirely contactless registration for image guided surgery. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these little paragraphs and pop them in. And you're gonna see as I pop some of these in that the image may grow in order to accommodate the height of the paragraph text. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that one in and it's all happening seamless. There's nothing I have to do to manually make adjustments or account for these things. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Our call to action text is going to be learn more. So I'm gonna copy that, bring this down. Why is my button already styled to look a certain way? Well, it's because on this website, the buttons were already customized. So as soon as I import the frame, it's just going to continue following the same patterns that I've already defined and styled. I don't have to do this work over and over and over again. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look very quickly at what we've got on the front end. So we have some nice content up here. We actually don't even need this accent heading, so I'm gonna remove it and then I'll refresh again. So we have our main heading up here. We have our lead paragraph. As we come down, we have an image on the left. We have our content on the right with our CTA. Again, image uh, content on the left, image on the right. Now, I particularly don't like this even columns approach. I liked it when they were uneven columns. So I'm just gonna go in and make that adjustment real quick. I'm gonna go to the CSS tab and I'm gonna go back to feature span five. I'm gonna hit save and I'm going to refresh. And now my images get that overlap effect and my content column is narrower. And that's what I really prefer. I'm gonna zoom out. This is what the website actually looks like now. And you can see that everything is still in proper page width alignment all the way down the page. And that's really all I'm gonna do here. I, I could continue doing more styling, but you get the point of the frame. I just wanted to show you the functionality of it. What we do need to take a look at is how this behaves on mobile. So we can see this coming down. And then at a break point, it's going to decide, hey, there's not enough room for all of this crazy stuff that we've been doing. We're just gonna go to a very standard layout at this point. And it's gonna give you the proper, notice that they were alternating before, but it knows that, hey, when they stack, I don't need to alternate anymore. What I actually need to do is make sure the image always comes first and the content comes immediately after. The image comes first, the content comes immediately after, and it's gonna do that all the way down the page. It's gonna do this for you automatically. Look how it breaks out when you're on a, uh, a larger screen, and then it naturally stacks exactly how you would expect it to. So this frame, allows us to achieve a fairly advanced and complex layout that is user adjustable. And we built out this section in seconds, really. You know, like I spent minutes and minutes and minutes talking about how it works, but the actual work of dropping in the content and all of this. And now what I'm seeing personally, one last little detail that I wanna make, I don't like how small these headings are. And this is just an automatic CSS thing with my typography. I can go to my heading size overrides. Notice that my H1s are 60 pixels. What should my H2s be? Um, actually, I, I actually I like, I think the, the H2 is fine. We can make it maybe, uh, let's do 48. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And we're gonna view on the front end and we're gonna see that this heading up here actually got bigger. That's my H2. These are H3s. So what can I do if I want my H3 right here to be a little bit bigger? Maybe I don't want it to be all the way up to my H2, but in a card like this, I think it deserves to be bigger. So are we stuck? Or do we have to change this to an H2 to make it the size of the H2? How do we handle this? Well, let's take a look at this for a second. So I'm gonna grab the heading and I'm gonna activate the class. What I don't want to do is change this to an H2 because now semantically, this page is wrong. These are not H2 level headings. It is correct that they are H3 level headings. So the only thing I wanna change is the actual size of the heading. Now, if I wanted it to be the size of an H2, I could pop in the variable H2 and it will get to be the size of the H2. Again, I will delete that. You can see what it is now. I add it and this is what it changes to. And so I can hit save. I can go to the front end and maybe that's fine right? Let me refresh the builder. The builder doesn't have the change that we made in the dashboard. Now the builder has the change we made in the dashboard. So now you're probably saying, well, 
that's a little too big. And I don't like the fact that it matches this H2 up here. I really want something in between H3 and H2. Can we achieve that? Well, yes, actually we can. So I'm gonna click on the heading again, make sure the class is activated, come back to the font size area, and I'm gonna do H3 multiplied by, and I can use any multiple that I want to. Do I want it to be 10% bigger, 20% bigger, 30%? I can play around with it. Let's start with 0.2, which is 20, it would actually be 1.2, which would be 20% bigger than the current size. I'm gonna hit enter. Automatic CSS is going to expand that calc function for us and wrap the var, the variable in a var tag. And now you can see, I'm gonna copy, remove, it's that size, 20% bigger, it looks like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, view this on the front end. And there is a 20% larger version of my H3 tag. If that's not big enough for you, you want it to be even bigger, simply come in and make it 30% bigger, hit save and refresh, and now it's 30% bigger. So you can really dial this in. I think that's actually perfect. You can dial this in to exactly what you want. And then you could go off and you could add borders to these images, you could add radiuses to these images, you could add little accent things to these images, do whatever you want to style this section. But look how quickly we were able to whip together a fairly complex section, change the ratios, throw in the content, style things up a little bit and we can hit paste or we can hit save, we can hit publish and we're, we're basically ready to go and move on with our life. That is feature section Sierra. I hope you really, really enjoyed this and got a lot out of it. I hope you have fun with this frame. Drop comments below and let us know what you think. Peace.